In the past 50 days, I took you guys along with me through this journey of building my discipline, testing my limits, and showing up as her. So I wanted to do a little reflection video of the pros and cons of the 50 hard, what I'm taking away from the challenge, and obviously the physical and mental results of doing this 50 hard challenge. Hi besties, welcome back to my channel. Today we're discussing all things 50 hard. So yeah, sit back, get cozy, get a little snack. The first thing that I want to talk about is the physical and the mental results of doing this 50 hard challenge. And so I just want to keep it super real with you. So I'm going to talk about the physical results first and then the mental ones. I also just want to preface before we get into the physical results is that I did not go into this challenge wanting to lose weight. I didn't have like a goal weight in mind. I really just wanted to do this for the mental benefits and the mental challenges. The only physical thing that I wanted out of this challenge was to get some ab definition. So again, I was not trying to lose weight and I'm by no means trying to influence you to do this to lose weight. But the first physical result is that I lost two pounds from this challenge. You might be thinking that's like very little for the amount of working out that I did. I mean, I worked out every single day. I was nourishing my body really well, staying away from fast foods, staying away from highly processed foods, you know, fixing my sleep schedule, which all kind of have to do with losing weight. But the reason why I only lost two pounds is because I gained a lot of muscle. I have a lot more definition in my abs area and also my arms. And I also gained some muscle in my legs. And then the last major physical result that I noticed was that I can finally do tricep push-ups and to also preface i was a college athlete like i was an all-american volleyball player when i was in college and through the amount of training that i did i was never able to do a tricep push-up and i fully believe the only reason why i'm able to do tricep push-ups now is because of pilates the amount of planks and the amount of push-ups and just overall the amount of upper body work that you're doing in pilates is bound to happen you are bound to be able to do push-ups and i've just never been physically or mentally challenged like that from any other workout. I've also been doing Pilates for five months now, so I think that also had to do with it. So if you do Pilates enough for, you know, five or six months, you will be able to do a, like a legitimate tricep push-up though. Pat on the back for me. And so now for the mental results. The first prominent mental result that I've noticed is that I didn't have a lot of self-pity throughout this challenge. Like I didn't allow myself to go down that rabbit hole of, oh, I'm sore today, or, oh, I'm like super exhausted, so I'm gonna give up. Obviously, there were times where I felt negative, but I was able to kind of like dig myself out of that hole a lot faster and easier because one, I was on a challenge, two, I was documenting my entire process, so I felt really accountable with you know, everybody watching me and everybody expecting me to show up every week. And so I just didn't allow myself to kind of go down that hole too far. And I was just able to get out of it a lot faster. I was also just in this like autopilot mode where I really didn't listen to my feelings a lot. And obviously there's kind of like a sweet spot of listening to your feelings versus just like staying on track. I was so in autopilot with my routines that I didn't really have like the time or the energy to have that self-pity mindset and to like feel sorry for myself and then over the next few weeks i didn't have trouble doing the rules every day because it was just automatic like it had to happen i couldn't go throughout my day without doing those rules and so it just became a little bit easier in that sense where i woke up and i was like okay i need to accomplish this today it needs to get done and just kind of making that mental switch to become like autopilot with this challenge really helped and i honestly loved it. it eliminated the feeling of just feeling sorry for myself and wanting to give up this next result could also be physical but i counted as mental so i fixed my sleep schedule for this challenge i was staying up way too late hence waking up late and it just put myself in a very lethargic sort of mood all day and i absolutely hated it and the reason why i put it as a mental result of like fixing my sleep schedule is because I had a lot less brain fog from prioritizing sleeping early and waking up early. I just simply didn't allow myself to stay up past a certain hour because I knew I had to show up the next day. That was a huge mental result to me because I no longer had that brain fog of waking up late, figuring out what I need to accomplish on my to-do list, and just having that feeling that I was behind. And with fixing my sleep schedule, I was able to recover and perform for the next day. And now for the pros and cons of this challenge. So my first pro is that I completely did a 180 with my mindset. As I was just talking about like my mental results, how I was able to go into this autopilot mode and just, you know, really just focus on these rules and grind it out. It gave me a lot of clarity of what I now want and what 
I want to feel like every single day. And in turn, this challenge just made me feel mentally stronger. That's exactly what I wanted from this challenge. And so I'm so glad that I was able to reap that reward of feeling like just kind of on top of the world and just blocking out any negative internal energy and just focusing on myself. So I really love that. Another pro is that I'm able to do a push-up now. Another pro is that I finally have some definition in my ab area. I don't want to owe it all to the 50 hard challenge because again, I was consistently doing Pilates for five months now, but the consistency of showing up three to four times a week at Pilates was really what made the difference. Really just propelled me to kind of see those results a lot faster because before the challenge, I would work out three times a week and call it a week. I'd be content with it. And in turn, I just wasn't seeing the results that I wanted. But then being that I had to work out seven days a week, you're bound to see some muscle definition. Like it's gonna happen. And on top of the clean eating, I really just saw these results a lot faster. And so obviously that's a pro. Like I've always wanted just more muscle definition in my abs. I'm still working on it. I just, I just want abs. Having that feeling of finally being able to see definition after doing 50 days of working out, like come on. That's a pro. Like there's no denying that. Look good, feel good, do good. Like when you look good, you just feel a lot more confident. And, and so that was definitely a pro for me. And now let's get into the cons. My number one con, I don't want this to be taken the wrong way or warped somehow. I gained a lot of muscle that I didn't really want. And this has to do with me being a college athlete in college. I was pushed to a level where i had to perform every single day my life was just training 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 and in turn it changed my body into just like a machine i needed to perform and with that i had a lot of muscles in my legs i had a lot of definition just like everywhere and looking back i was bulky because i had to i needed to perform at a high level and so once i graduated college I really wanted to transition to this next version of myself. I just didn't want to be as bulky and as muscly as I was as an athlete. And I really wanted to embrace more of like my feminine side. I wanted to lean out. I didn't want to carry all this muscle with me just to have. I wasn't needed to perform as an athlete anymore. And so my focus as soon as I was out of school was to lean out and to do low intensity workouts. I was doing hot yoga. I was doing a lot of yoga sculpt. I was doing mat Pilates doing a lot of walking and I was able to lose around 30 pounds post-grad and a lot of it was muscle and I did that intentionally because again I just did not want to carry that muscle weight with me anymore I had no use for it but I still loved being strong and so I still worked out but I just took it a lot more easier because I just wanted to embrace like this next version of myself I still have that mindset today I don't feel the need to have so much muscle on my body anymore and so the reason why I consider this a con of gaining muscle weight is because i just don't want that anymore i don't want to be like misunderstood in that aspect like i love feeling strong i love looking strong and i'm very happy with how my body looks today i was happy with how my body looked before this challenge but again i went into this challenge not for the physical benefits but for the mental ones and so coming out of this challenge with you know feeling stronger being able to do these push-ups but having more of a muscly build it's just a con for me because now I'm at the point where I want to lean back down again. I don't want to carry all this excess muscle. So I hope that made sense. And I hope that's not like misunderstood in any way. It's just because I know my body so well. Like I was an athlete my whole life. I competed at a high level in college and now I'm in this next chapter of my life. I know what works for me physically and what doesn't anymore. And I just love the version of myself where I'm not carrying like this bulky muscle weight on me. So now we're gonna get into the takeaways of this challenge. Things that I want to keep implementing into my life that have really made me just feel like a better version of myself. And so the first thing, journaling. I said it here before so many times on my channel. If you've been keeping up with me on my other platforms or just over the years on YouTube, you know how much I love journaling. I incorporate journaling into almost every single one of my vlogs just because it helps me practice gratitude every day. It helps me with my self-esteem. And it also is just a little pocket therapist. Like I love brain dumping. I love putting out all my ideas, whether it be for social media, whether it be for, you know, just physical real life. I love journaling about every single experience that I have. So that is definitely not going away. Another takeaway is the no alcohol. I know this is like a little controversial and I've had a few comments on my channel where people are like, oh, I was with you till the no alcohol, which to each their own. I am no person to judge, but just personally, I feel the best when I do not drink. Not to say that I don't, I like drinking in social settings when it's with friends. I've never been and I will continue to not be a casual drinker. I just do not crave alcohol after like a long hard day or 
you know, just a casual wine with like dinner. I just have never craved alcohol like that and I will continue not to because why would I implement something into my life if I didn't need it in the first place? And I just do not see it benefiting me. So again, I like it in the social setting. I do love a good night out. Like I love a good little club moment and I love doing that with friends, but just for my overall lifestyle, I will not be implementing casual drinking into my life. And then my last takeaway is that I wanna continue waking up early. This will always be an ongoing battle for me. I am not perfect. I will have those moments where, you know, I go through ruts and I have to sleep in till nine o'clock and not every morning is going to be a 5 a.m. go, go, go morning. It's not going to be a 6 a.m. Pilates morning, you know, I'm going to go through these ebbs and flows, but I do feel my highest version of myself is one that wakes up around 5 to 6 a.m. and just has those like two to three hours of strictly me time, focusing on myself, focusing on bettering myself before the world demands my attention. And as you guys have seen, you know, in my prior vlogs, there were mornings where I literally had to wake up at four to make it to my 5 a.m. class. And although it sucked in the moment of like waking up at four, I did not regret it because I had two to three hours strictly to myself. Just a silent morning, going to my workout classes, taking care of my body, and then coming home, showering, making my coffee, making my breakfast, journaling, reading, all of that in a span of two to three hours was just so important to me. It just put me in the best mood to accomplish all my tasks for the day. And it made me a lot less reactive and anxious towards people who demanded my attention. Like I don't ever want to be reactive to the people that I love and just anxious trying to get things done. Like it's just not fair to them. So I found that I was just happiest when I had those hours in the morning where I just focused on myself before people demanded my attention so that takeaway of waking up early also kind of ties into the takeaway of staying active as much as i love moving my body and as much as it feels good in the moment i do not think working out seven days a week is necessary for me a healthy balance will probably be around four to five times a week that's when i just feel the best at least having two days to recover or going on you know long walks that's when i feel my best and that's when i feel like the leanest in my opinion. Again, I just do not want that bulky feeling anymore. And so taking those recovery days are really crucial for my body to just kind of chill out, recover the muscles that I've been working so hard and to also not push them over the edge to form even more muscle, if that makes sense. So we love our rest days over here. But yeah, that's why I kind of took a while to make this reflection video because I straight up did nothing for a week. The only activity I did was going on long walks, but I just honestly wanted a rest. I wanted to really debrief and to reflect on the key takeaways and the pros, the cons of this challenge. And I'm so glad that I did because I do already feel a lot better in my body. So yeah, those are my takeaways of the challenge. So I guess the final question that I've been getting asked is would I do the 50 hard challenge again? And the answer is yes, I totally would. I would do it again for the mental purposes. I would totally do this challenge again to get back on track. And I'm kind of thinking about doing it at the beginning of each year because the clarity and the focus that I had at the beginning of this year because of the 50 hard was just unmatched. I've never started off a year as strong as I did with this challenge and it just felt so good to kind of just be on a schedule and to show up for myself and also be held accountable by you guys. And it was such a treat having everyone to support me and to talk with me in the comments. And it was truly the highlight of this challenge was to talk with this community of like-minded people who want to become better versions of themselves. I just hope that's the kind of vibe that I bring you guys as well. I want this channel to be kind of a safe space for going after our goals, you know, reflecting on our wins and also reflecting on our failures because we are bound to fail and that's totally okay. The biggest lessons are from when we fail. And so again, I just want this to be a safe space for everyone here. To one, just be inspired by my journey and to also just be able to like talk like we're besties and just to catch up with each other and to also just support each other while we chase our goals so yeah i kind of went into a tangent there but long story short i would definitely do this challenge again and i'm so thankful for everything that i've learned through this challenge like i've learned that i'm a lot more disciplined than i thought i was especially being a college athlete the amount of discipline in that itself was just insane and then transitioning to adulthood where i didn't have a coach telling me what to do every day i didn't have a team to hold me accountable i didn't have people that I need to show up for physically. That in itself is a test now where I have to show up for myself, show up for you guys, and you know, just push myself to be a better person when 
I'm not vlogging or when I'm not showing it to the world. And so yeah, I'm very proud of myself for completing the 50 hard challenge and I do not regret any of it. I love the rules that I put for myself. Again, it does not need to be concrete. Like you do not need to follow rules for somebody else. You can adjust any of the rules for yourself. And I'm so glad that I did that because I got the results that I've been wanting for so long. Yeah, thanks for listening to me yap about my 50 hard. I, again, it was just such a treat talking with everyone and also just talking to people who are also on this journey whether they're doing like 50 hard 75 hard i had a few people doing the 75 hard challenge which is just hats off to you i commend you for doing it so it's just really nice keeping up with people in that sense again thank you guys so much for watching and for supporting me and i hope this inspires you to start your own challenge it's not too late in the year to go after your goals like there's never a wrong time to push yourself and to do challenges like this we are constantly reinventing ourselves so there's never a wrong time to push yourself and to achieve your goals so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this little reflection and i hope it gives you guys some sort of insight into whether or not you want to do this challenge for yourself, I highly recommend it and I will always be here to support you and to talk with you if you'd like and to just cheer you on from the sidelines because I'm rooting for you and I believe in you and I am proud of you. So if you guys like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. Love you, bye.